Hello! A new quest is available. In this quest, we'll explore transition effects, classes, and families of transitions. But before we begin, I'll add some resources to the images folder of our project. These resources contain backgrounds and sprites that will bring our story to life. Great! Let's start this quest by opening the script file of the Rempy project. Ready? Let's go! Let us begin. In this section, we'll explore a variety of predefined transitions available in RedP. These transitions allow us to smoothly switch between different backgrounds and sprites, adding visual flair to our visual novel. Transition classes in RedP provide more control and customization over the transitions. We can define our own unique transitions using classes to achieve specific effects tailored to our narrative. Transition families are functions that define a large family of related transitions. In this quest, we'll focus on the family of move transitions, similar to the move and ease transitions. These transitions allow us to create smooth movements for characters and objects, adding fluidity to our visual novel. For this first transition, I'm using the fade effect. The fade effect creates a smooth blend into a new image. Adventurers, check out the dissolve effect. It dissolves the old screen to reveal the new background with style. A seamless transition that adds a touch of magic to our story. Let's explore the pixelate effect. With this effect, the background becomes pixelated during one second, creating a rechar or video game-like vibe. We're now displaying a character sprite at the top of the screen. I'll move the sprite to the top left corner of the screen using the move effect. This creates an elegant movement for our character. We can move the character to the right using the moving right effect. Watch as it moves to the top right corner. To hide the first sprite of this character, we use in this example the move at left effect to make it exit the screen to the left. Sprite of this character makes its entrance with the easy bottom effect. It smoothly appears from the bottom of the screen. To make the second sprite disappear, we can use the ease of try effect. The character glides to the right, creating an elegant exit.
Now we're displaying the potion with the zoom in effect. The potion appears with a zoom in animation. Look at this dial of the window. We've added the text grade here as a potion with a typing speed of 20 characters per second. After showing the potion, we hide it with the zoom out effect. The potion moves away from the screen, reducing in size. Now we're displaying the heart sprite at the top left corner of the screen with the zoom in out effect. This adds a touch of animation to the heart. See how this background appears behind the heart sprite with the Vapunch effect. This transition shakes the screen vertically for a quarter second. For this sixth background, we're using the Punch effect. This transition is similar to the Vapunch effect, but shakes the screen horizontally for a quarter second. For the seventh background, we're using the blinds effect. It creates the illusion of blinds opening to reveal the background. Look at the effect on the eighth background with squares. The background is divided into squares and then reassembled to display the complete background. For the ninth background, we're using the white dupe effect. The background smoothly transitions in from the bottom of the screen. Now we're displaying the tenth background with the slide right effect. The background slides in from the left of the screen. With the slide away down effect, the tenth background exits the screen by sliding away to the bottom. For the 12th background, we're using the push-up effect. The background appears by pushing the content up from the bottom of the screen. Finally, we're using the iRisen effect on the 13th background. The background opens like a camera iris to reveal a new scene. Let's see how the transitions turn out. They add a dynamic touch to our visual novel making it more engaging for players. Really?
Thanks, Maya. Now that we've seen the results of the Pritifon transitions together, let's move on to the second part of the tutorial, where we'll explore transition classes to further customize our effect. We'll start with the Dissolve Transition, which creates a smooth fade effect between images. On this line, we define a transition called Transition underscore class underscore V1. That's right. We set it to use the Dissolve effect with a duration of 2 seconds. Next up is the Alpha Dissolve Transition, where we can control the image's opacity for a fading effect. Look at this part. We define an alpha dissolve transition with some specific settings. Think of RenPay functions like Reset. Some ingredients like those with none as default or optional extras you can choose to add or leave out, just like spices in a dish. Indeed, we have an image called Control underscore B2 here, which is CHR underscore underscore one aligned at 0, 0.0. 0, 0. Then we apply a linear movement gradually moving the image to 1.0, 1.0 over 2 seconds. And after that, we have a pause of 0 0.5 seconds before the transition takes place. Exactly. So when the transition is triggered, the image will fade in or out depending on the reverse setting. Now, let's see how we can combine transitions with the composite transition effect. Here's a cool one. We define a composite transition named transition underscore class underscore v3. We pass three transitions as arguments here. Punch, moving bottom, and move at left. This means that when the vote punch transition is played, move in bottom and move out left will be added in this transition. Next, let's explore the crop move transition, where the scene is positioned when cropping. In this example, we use the wipe lift mode, and it will take two seconds for the image to slide and crop. Also, top new is set to false meaning the new image won't be shown at the top during the transition. Moving on, let's check out the fade transition, which gradually changes the image's opacity. Ah, uh, the fade transition. It's perfect for gradually fading an image in or out. We set the duration to 1 second, starting opacity to 1.0 and ending opacity to Notice the color parameter 51C1B4. That's the color of the fade effect. Now let's explore the image dissolve transition, where we can fade between different images. Here's the image dissolve transition. It allows us to fade between two different images. Exactly. We set BJ underscore 4 as the target image, 
and it will take two seconds for the transition to happen. Now let's see how the move a transition works. It moves an image while entering or leaving the screen. Pay attention to the move a transition. It's all about moving an image during an enter or leave event. Here we set up two transformations. Control underscore B7 underscore enter moves the image from 0.0, 0, .0, 0, .0 to 0 0.5, 0, 0 in two seconds. And control underscore B7 underscore leave moves it from 0 0.5, 0, 0.0 to 1.0, 0, 0 in the same duration. By using this transition, we can create smooth movement effects on images when they appear or disappear. Now let's take a look at the multiple transition effect, where we can combine multiple transitions. This one is quite versatile. It's called the multiple transition where we combine multiple transitions. Yes, we provide a list of transitions and their associated images or settings. In this example, we use dissolve for 0.5 seconds, then fade on bj underscore 6, and pixelate on bj underscore 7. Finally, we set the last transition to true, indicating that it should use the default transition settings. Let's move on to the pixelate transition, which pixelates the image. Sign for some pixel art. This transition is called pixelate. Exactly. With a duration of 1.5 seconds and a pixel size of 5, the image will be transformed into pixelated goodness. Now we'll explore the push move transition, which moves the image while pushing the rest of the screen.
The push move transition is quite dynamic. It pushes the image while moving the rest of the screen. In this case, we push the image to the right with a duration of three seconds. That way, we get a cool effect of sliding the screen along with the image. And here comes the grand final, the swing transition. It's a swing effect, like a pendulum which can be vertical or horizontal. Here, we set it to be vertical with a delay of one second, and we don't reverse the effect. Also, notice the 13th background and the flatten option, which controls the screen's behavior during the swing. We've seen all the cool transitions. Now let's apply them to different scenes. Okay, let's do it. Finally, we showcase the transitions in different scenes. We use the show command with specific transitions for each image or background. And don't forget the pause commands to give us time to see the beautiful effects. Okay.
lovely Emi will join us to guide you through this part. Take it away, Emi. Thank you, Maya. I'm excited to show you all about transition families. Let's dive right in. Here we define three move transitions, middle, show, and hide. In this example, the transitions are utilized on the main layer, which is dedicated to backgrounds and characters. Neat, right? Now, let's work with some dictionaries to set up our transitions for specific layers. Here, we have two dictionaries, main underscore layer underscore dissolve and screen underscore layer underscore pixelate. They contain the transitions we want to use for different layers. Now, let's see the transition families in action. We apply the transitions to different elements on the screen. That's right. And with that, we've covered transition families in RenPy. Congratulations! Thank you, Emmy, for guiding us through this exciting part. You're welcome, Mia. And thank you to everyone for joining us on this adventure. 
have fun exploring the world of transitions and creating amazing visual effects in your RIMPAD projects. Until next time, happy game developing, and see you in our next tutorial. Goodbye everyone! Bye -bye.